Hello, I'm Jesus Lagarta, and uh, in this short video, I will describe the basic uh, uh, mechanisms and functionalities of Paraver in terms of uh, timelines, how to navigate them, how to interpret them. I have already loaded a trace file, in this case, uh, this file here, which is in the order of uh, 200 megabytes, is already loaded, and I'm going to load on it uh, one configuration file that I have prepared which uh, pops up three views first one is of MPI calls uh, the last one is on this one is on MIPS instructions per second and the intermediate one is on the duration of the of the user level computations these three views is show kind of the this uh, multispectral philosophy that we are advocating for looking at one reality with different perspectives, different views, different metrics. On top, as we said, we have MPI calls, and if we double click and we see the color table, this table tells us every color, the meaning of, 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 every, of every color. In the bottom ones, we have um, we are representing magnitude that can have real values and in a large dynamic range, so uh, rather than translating them by a color table, we translate them by a gradient function, which we see the different values and for which we have actually, uh, sorry, for which we have actually the uh, actual limits of that uh, of that uh, gradient color in the lower and upper limit, and there's a, a set of uh, gradients between these two these two values. This is because this function represent uh, this this each of these views represent a, a function which in this case is a categorical one. So for it we should be using this uh, color code encoding in the rendering step, and for the ones that represent the real value, the, the large dynamic range functions of time, we should be uh, using gradient coloring. We can navigate on the functions of on these functions of time, and we can zoom on them, for example. And actually, I have them synchronized, so the zooming one of them will actually make the two other ones show exactly the same part of time for all the threads. I can uh, scroll with the mouse uh, in and out, and I can focus my attention to a given part of the execution of the trace. Not only in the time dimension, but let me clone the window and let me do it and, and let me take it out of the synchronized group. Maybe even I can create a new group for synchronization. So, and I can zoom with control, control and selecting an interval. I can click select a few threads and I can select uh, maybe only two of those and I take only two of those two of those threads and I have a given interval of time and I can still zoom in and out. I can, for example, clone this other window, change it from this group to this other group, so it now has actually uh, synchronized with this one. This Here I still see all the threads, all the processes. In this one I also only see two, so I can copy and I can paste the objects, the objects what that are displayed in this case are the processes. And here we see the, the two views focused on only two threads. What I want to show now is that this in reality, and this is one of the fundamentals of Paraver, these both of them are functions of time. This is, I can actually paint them as a function line. I can paint the other one as a function line. This one has a few categorical values, whose, as, as we said before here, we see the range is, is probably too high. I can fit the semantic scale, actually I can fit both so that I can see the minimum value is three, the maximum value exists. But because this is an MPI call view, this, these values are the identifiers of the MPI call where I am in. So this is what we said, it should be rendered with a categorical paint as a color painted as a color. Outside of the MPI, I am in with a value which is uh, numerically zero. I can paint the values in, in, te in textual form, translated with PCF information, 
or I can paint them in numerical value uh, painted. I can click here and this is an MPI weight all, but in numerical value the MPI weight all is, is a 6. Okay, so this is the, the functions of time. The message is in both cases there are functions of time. All, all in, in all the cases. What is the, the situation that we have because we are uh, representing a large interval of time or because we are representing a large number of processes? Is that many threads or even a thread, may, will a single thread may try to put many of their values into a single, into a single pixel, okay? So, and the question is what happens when we have different values that are tried to be put into a single pixel? We have to decide which of those to put. In the, in the case of MPI calls, and let's show it here, the options, this is the draw mode and this is the rendering mode, the option that we selected for this one is random not zero. So, any thread trying to put the, a value different from zero, will one of those will succeed. And the value will show that I am inside some MPI call. And you see this is kind of a random mix because here there are many different MPI calls being put. I actually could render with the maximum value and in this case would tell me like almost everybody is inside an MPI weight all. The message here is the rendering can be a little bit misleading, but essentially there is no other way around these things. There is plenty of processes with very fine grain sequences of compute and communication trying to put many colors into a single pixel. You cannot make a screen, a window sufficiently large to represent that. And even if you were able to do that, your eye would not be able to really differentiate and point and really look at understand the, all the different configurations. So for that point thing, it is better to have an overall view of the whole system, use a rendering which semantically conveys the maximum possible information to the analyst about the what is happening in that interval and in this case for example, for MPI calls, a good rendering way is this thing of random, random not mm, non-zero, and, and and this will give us an overall view of the overall structure, the overall perception of what the program is doing. It has regions of compute and regions of MPI. Complementary to that is, or, or at the same uh, level of, of that, let's say is the fact that you are also rendering functions of time in the case of metrics that are uh, real valued metrics in, in a, with a wide dynamic range. In this case, I selected a, a rendering mode which was maximum for the MIPS. And this is if there is somebody doing what this is telling me, for example, putting the mouse here, is somebody in here is doing five giga instructions per second but uh, I don't know for how long, I don't know if it's many people or it's only one or many threads or it's only one. This is uh, uh, the rendering which probably we could have cloned the window and we could have used a different rendering which might be, would have been, the maximum is, is probably in, uh, let's say too optimistic as a way of display, as, as displaying the, the, the actual MIPS. If we choose the minimum, it's probably too pessimistic. It actually says that in the same interval that it says there is somebody doing six giga instructions per second, there is somebody doing 400 mega instructions per second. Maybe a semantically more relevant for this case would be if I clone the window and if I choose a rendering which is kind of an average, maybe this is a more uh, semantically insightful information. I can actually, by the way, I see there is a kind of repetitive structure. I see it here, I see it there. 
they all show some level of repetitive structure. Maybe I can zoom into a region to see a little bit better the the region in the interval of the region and, and and we have the three different rendering modes that we saw we have somebody doing very good MIPS some somebody doing very bad MIPS and somebody doing and on average of uh, 1.5 giga instructions per second and by the way all of this happens in regions with very fine granularities this is the useful duration very fine granularities between 1 and 700 microseconds and we also see that it's full of MPI uh, communications. We could actually even zoom into some of these regions and we could uh, zoom more and more and we could see that really is a very, very fine grain, uh, fine grain region. Let me fit the time scale again and I would uh, point to another characteristic or another feature of this rendering rendering mechanism. And let me not do it for the whole. Let me do one thing. Let me get rid of these two renderings. I'm aware that this is rendering with the maximum, so this is fine. As long as I am aware, let me take uh, some iterative iterations. What we said is that the scale of the rendering is controlled is controlled here. So there's the, this is what sets the, the light green and what says the dark blue. I can actually this there I can actually fit the semantic scale, which actually does fit these values and to actually represent the biggest and the smallest real actual values in this interval. What I wanted to show you is what will happen if I change, if I reduce this thing? What I expect to happen is there will be somewhere in the trace, there will be a region, somebody who has a value of MIPS which is a little bit higher than this threshold. That thread will try to put, according to our coloring gradient scheme, where if you go above the limit, this limit, you end up putting a dark orange thing. So somebody will try to put a dark orange thing. So we like, uh, the, given that this is the max rendering, I'm rendering with maximum, and I'm re rendering with this uh, change, I've reduced a little bit the upper limit. What it's telling me is there should be some orange here. Somebody who is actually doing more than this 6998 MIPS. Do we see it? difficult right actually is the problem that the pixels are that we don't have sufficient pixels well I would claim it's a problem that we have too many pixels let me mimic a pixels and let me make them a little bit smaller bigger sorry and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger comes out that the the guy who is a little above 6998 is is here i can certainly clone if i'm interested on in that certainly clone i can certainly zoom into that interval oh i forgot taking it out of the group i can zoom into that interval and i can see a region where this guy is getting more than this number of of uh, mips the message of all of this is that w combining these nonlinear renderings with nonlinear scale of the of the coloring, where after in the lower bound everything that is below the lower limit has one color different from the from the gradient, and everything that is above has a color different from the gradient we are able to identify outliers. So this is one of the things where you can really find out outliers with extreme high precision. You can find needles in, uh, in haystacks. So 
This was about the navigation, zooming in and out. This was about the rendering of those functions of time. I want to show a little bit more about uh, the use of the tool for manipulating the traces. And in reality, what, what we have, let me get rid of these ones. What we have here is we have we think we have identified an iterative structure, and it might be interesting to do an analysis to select as a region of analysis, a focus of, an, uh, of analysis, as a region of interest, only one iteration of this iterative behavior. We can do so by, for example, cutting from the trace. You select the cutter. I want to select the region, and I'm going to use for the region I'm going to use, let's say, from here to here, which seems to be the period of this function. And in reality, I'm not, I don't want to cut from, from here in the middle. It would be nice to cut from the very beginning, from just after the MPI call till just after the MPI call here, so that I cut exactly one iteration of this iterative algorithm. Though, though it, it graphically would be essentially impossible, but we can tell the tool to and not to break the state, so to really to do a search towards the beginning, not to remove the first state, to remove the last one. So this thing will remove, the, will do a search and will do the cut exactly at the boundary here. And for this one, the cut will be done at the, exactly at the boundary here. What this allows us to do is to generate a trace file, which is a cut, exact cut of one iteration. By doing it, I'm now it's scanning the original trace file using the the time limits that we have set and the and the and the indications of how to cut is generating another trace and it's loading this other trace and on this other trace we can really load the same configuration file that we had before and this trace is exactly one iteration exactly one iteration of the run. This mechanism, what it allows us is to do the same thing, for example, for a trace of more threads. For example, I've already done it, and I have, for example, a trace with uh, 96 threads, one iteration of 96 threads. So I can load one iteration with 96 threads. I can load the two threads, the two traces, and I can do comparative analysis. This was the, the intention to show how to do this comparative analysis and to see how the behavior changes when, for example, scaling. I've loaded the trace of 96 processes. On this trace, I can load the same configurations, for example, the same views of MPI calls, MIPS, and duration of the computation. And I have here is one iteration with 48 processors. Here is one iteration with uh, 96. In order to do comparative studies, would be nice to be able, the 48 one should take more, and it actually is 400 milliseconds, 480, this one is 260. Would be nice to paste the time. And because these are synchronized, they will stay synchronized between themselves. And we see the actual run uh, with 48 processors and the actual run with 96 processors. We could argue that uh, this should be this should be half than that, and it is not. So scalability is not perfect. And comparing the things, we can look at whether which are the parts that scale well and which are the parts that scale not so well. These things seems to scale relatively well. Is there some, some place that does not scale proportionally that well? And proportionally, if you look at it, is if you feed again the time scale, if you look at it, there's this region of communication that proportionally takes more time in the 96 run than in the 48. This is a region that is not scaling very well. It's the region that we identified before that had very fine granularities. Some very good MIPS in some of the regions, but overall a lot of MPI time. My final, co when for comparative scaling uh, studies, 
we have done, we can copy the, the time scale from one trace to the other, but if we want to look at the subset of it, for example, if we want to look at it at this part, and we this is how, how long it takes with 48 processors, and we want to, we want to look the same scale for this other part, I have to zoom into the beginning, and the two, this begin time and this begin time are different, so I cannot copy the scale from one to the other because I will not select this region, but I cannot copy the, the full time scale, but I can copy the duration of the window. I can copy the duration, so and I have two windows on two different traces showing essentially the same region of space, uh, of, of, of behavior, between the two traces, and I see that it is actually a little bit faster with 96, but of course it's far from being double, twice as fast that we would actually like it to be. So we have a region that is not scaling very well, even if other regions were scaling better. The objective of this uh, session was actually just to show the navigation capabilities, the possibility of of get of looking let's say looking at the forest without uh, drilling down into into the to the very low levels of the individual things i would recommend strongly that as a first uh, high level outline and look at the traces but then we have shown how you can navigate you can cut traces you can prepare a set of traces which you can compare in 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 lots of detail so with this, uh, I complete this uh, short video on the timelines. And if you are interested, I invite you to look at the next video on the tables. Thank you.